The judge has sentenced Cecily McMillan in the case involving uh, an Occupy protester allegedly punching a cop in the face, or I should say elbowing a cop in the face. Now, this all happened on March 17, 2012. There were Occupy protesters at Zuccotti Park, and police officers showed up to the scene to get the Occupy protesters to basically spread out, go away. They wanted them out of the park. And in the process of trying to detain some of the protesters, one cop by the name of Grantley Bovell allegedly grabbed Cecily McMillan's breast, and she says that as part of an instinctual reaction, Action, she hit him or elbowed him in the face and she got arrested for doing so. Now we have a video showing you what happened after her, her arrest. Let's take a look at that. So she was suffering a seizure while she was in police custody, while she was handcuffed and laying on the floor. And as you can see from that video, the cops didn't do anything about it. But after that whole episode occurred, uh, she actually got prosecuted. And the reason why she got prosecuted was because she elbowed the cop in the face. Now, she admitted to doing it, but the whole question in this case was, was it her intent to hit her hit the cop, or was it really her instinct? And she said, look, it was my instinct. She had photos shown she in court. with the elbow. With her elbow, yeah. So she showed this picture in court to, to prove that she had gotten grabbed, uh, her breasts had gotten grabbed, and as a result, she elbowed the cop. Um, but it, it wasn't enough of a defense, and she got charged with second-degree felony assault, and uh, the judge has now sentenced her to 90 days behind bars. Now, she is getting uh, credit for time served. She served about uh, two weeks behind bars, and um, she will have five years of probation when she gets out of prison. I don't, uh, I, you know. Hey, how about the cop who she assaulted, whose name is... Uh, Grantley Bovell. Grantley Bovell or Bubble. Uh, how about he testifies that he thinks that it was instinctive? Oh, he doesn't think it. Yeah, I know. But how about you do the right thing? Like you, like she's been in, she's already served two weeks, mm -hmm. and maybe she gets a little probation. She gets maybe, here's what can happen to her, because she did hit a cop with her elbow. I mean, it would be nice if a cop would be a man and realize that you were in a difficult situation and your job is hard and back away from it. But instead, you cuffed her and she had a seizure there on the ground. Thankfully, she survived the seizure. She's okay. But obviously, you grabbed her breast. Everybody who saw it acknowledges that you grabbed her breast. She has the wound. That's a normal thing that somebody might do in that type of situation. Um, and uh, nobody should be, that, that girl should not be behind bars. That's yeah. it. And the two weeks is already too long. So how about that? You go, well, you, all you have to say in front of a jury is the cop to go, it might have been an instinct, instinctive. She might not have known who I was. And the jury won't convict her. And the jury is, is, was concerned in this case where they, isn't the, 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 yeah. the sentence might be longer. They were concerned because there is a mandatory minimum in cases like this. Uh, for what she got convicted of, uh, there is a minimum of two years behind bars. So before she got sentenced, she was actually uh, speaking to a publication where she said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got convicted, which means I'm facing between two to seven years. But uh, several members of the jury actually wrote to the judge and asked for leniency because they didn't feel that it was necessary for someone like her to to be behind bars, they they didn't see her as a as a threat to society or a violent criminal. And uh, two members of Pussy Riot also wrote to the judge. And thankfully, she will not serve that two year sentence. Um, it's three months behind bars, but three months is still too long, if you ask right. me. I mean, I, I was mad at the judge at first, but of course, the judge did, uh, did execute some restraint uh, in this case. But it would be nice to issue uh, none. And you know, she's also. It doesn't matter, because all that matters is what happened. It doesn't matter what's in your head or what your beliefs are. That's why I don't like hate crime laws. But she's a she's not even a radical. No, like, not at she, all. She's considered a moderate. She's a mainstream protester. Democrat. Like yeah. she wants to build the Democratic Party. She's not like she's trying to convince occupy people to be less radical. Yeah, look, it doesn't even matter what her political beliefs are. She was there protesting, and the government doesn't like that. Uh, we already have seen many different cases where there's been government intimidation toward the protesters. I mean, I always go back to this example because I think that it, it really shows you what the priorities of the Obama administration were or was uh, during the protests. You know, they contacted Twitter looking for private information on the Occupy protesters, people that were using Twitter in order to 
to mobilize other protesters. What does that say to you? I mean, to me, that's a form of intimidation. This ruling in this case is a form of intimidation. It means don't stir the pot. If there's ever any type of uprising, if there's any type of pro political movement happening in the country, don't associate with it because we don't like it. Now, let me read to you what the judge said. He ruled that a civilized society must not allow an assault to be committed under the guise of civil disobedience. The court finds that a lengthy sentence would not serve the interests of justice in this case. So, you know, the second part of that is fine. You know, a lengthy sentence doesn't make sense. But in my opinion, no sentence makes sense. The way the cops handled that situation was ridiculous. I understand. It was a chaotic situation. I'm sure that in, I'm going to give the cop the benefit of the doubt and say in that chaotic situation, he didn't necessarily intend to grab her breast, but that's how it worked out. Obviously, she hit him because of instinct. You let it go. You don't go after her and prosecute her. Now, the cop said, hey, you know what? I had a black eye. I had um, issues, you know, afterwards. And, and as a result, you know, I, I needed to go after her. But no, I'm not buying that at all. You didn't like what happened to you. Your power felt challenged. Your ego got bruised, along with your face, obviously. And you wanted to go after this woman who's not a threat to society. And it makes me sick to my stomach because it sends that message. Don't stir the pot. Don't be politically active. Don't fuck with anyone that has any position of authority. Because if you do, you're going to serve time behind bars. Uh, she, uh, she told Vice, uh, the, the website Vice, she had intimated that her ordeal left her uh, psychologically depleted, regularly close to tears. Then he points out no one would, dis uh, would dis describe this young, you saw the picture of her, this young white woman as an archetypal victim of police abuse. Uh, she admitted uh, when she did an interview with Truth Dig when she said, people of color, people who are poor do not have a chance for justice. Those people have no choice but to plea out. They can never win in court. I can fight it, she says. This makes me a very privileged person. She did fight it, but she didn't win. And by the way, she already served two weeks, mm -hmm. right? So she didn't have that much money because she can get out on bail for a while. Yeah. So it's not like she's super wealthy.